Hey, it's Nick with B&H. We are here at NAB 2023, checking out the Blackmagic Design booth right now to see what they have new and noteworthy here. Uh, to call it a booth, though, is kind of an understatement. They kind of have their own incorporated village going on, but they have a lot of new hardware and software. And on the hardware front, the first thing we got to talk about is this guy, the Atom Television Studio 4K8. Now this is an update to their Atom Television Studio HD8 and HD8 ISO, and the main headline features obviously now, it can work in 4K. There's a few other differences to the hardware though, it mostly looks identical from the outside though. The only main differences are the fact you have a joystick on this one now, you have 10 gigabit ethernet support in the back, and then the biggest difference comes with the inputs and the outputs. On this one, you still have the eight inputs that you had before for SDI, but then you also have 10 aux outputs. And the reason for this is because this guy does not come with an ISO ISO version, which means that you cannot, internally at least, record all the different channels to it, but the outputs are there to fix that. So what you can do with this is you can route all of the aux out to something like this, which is a HyperDeck recorder. So with something like this, you can take each one of the inputs and record it as an individual channel. And what it will do is, A, it will keep these time synced so that you can still take all of these, throw them in an editor if you want, and they will all stay perfectly in sync. But also it gives you the option to record higher quality. Usually like with the Atom Minis, for example, you can only do H.264. But with the HyperDeck, what you could do is you can record in ProRes, you can record in DNX. So it gives you the option, if you even want to record in ISO, to record to something higher quality. And if you don't need the ISO, it is still a perfectly self-contained switcher. So this is gonna be coming out in July. Um, and it's a really great option for people who either loved the HD version and needed an upgrade or people who wanted those workflows where you could incorporate 4K as opposed to being limited to HD. Blackmagic has lots of other new hardware updates here as well between new switchers, converters, deck links. Uh, they even have a new Ursa Mini 12K with a low pass filter in it to help with uh, aliasing and moiré, that's an update they have as well. But a lot of the other new updates have come on the software front with DaVinci Resolve. They have that beta of 18.5 out, which you can download today. So let's check out what's new in there. So as a DaVinci Resolve editor, I will admit I was especially excited for the updates that they have in the new beta of DaVinci Resolve 18.5, which once again, you can download now. A lot of the updates to this version are in the form of AI-assisted features, which normally I'm a little reticent about, but what I like about how DaVinci Resolve is doing is most of these features are just designed to help with the organization of your footage, metadata information, and more efficient editing. None of these really take away from the creative process. So the main headline features are with text-based auto-generated subtitles. So the first part of this is, as the name indicates, you can generate subtitles automatically, and not just subtitles, but as it was shown to me, it also understands context. So what you can do is you can either take your whole timeline or select an in and out point and have DaVinci Resolve generate subtitles for you. And not only does it do this pretty accurately based on what we saw, but it also understands context, by which I mean if it understands that there was a question asked, it will add the question mark in the subtitles. Or if you say the phrase millimeter, it will not spell out the whole word millimeter, it'll just put MM. So in addition to the subtitles, it can also auto transcribe audio for text-based editing, which seems to be a feature popular with a lot of other NLEs here at NAB. But this is a really powerful tool because what you can do is it will transcribe audio either in the timeline or just in an in and out point. And what you can do is you can just export this as a text document if you just want like the actual transcribed audio as a document. But also what you can do is you can highlight text within this and it will show you the in and out points in that clip of where that text, where those text parameters are, which is really, really cool and a really interesting way to be able to edit. So DaVinci's Neural Engine AI can also be used to automatically categorize different audio types. So in other words, you can highlight a bunch of clips. It will figure out if you are listening to music. It will figure out if the clip as is dialogue or a sound effect. But not only that, I thought that was the limit of what it could do, but even within that, if it understands a clip has dialogue, for instance, it will then also figure out if there is cheering in there or if there's a dog barking in there. It will subcategorize and basically add metadata that lets you search for stuff on an even more minute level, which if you have 
tons of footage to sift through. If you're doing a documentary, let's say, this is an incredibly powerful way to very quickly have DaVinci Resolve automatically find this metadata for you. Now on the color page, there's a new relight effect. And what this does is it lets you, in any scene that you have, add a virtual light source with realistic highlights and fall off. And as you move it, it will adjust accordingly. A really cool example that was shown is you can also use DaVinci Resolve's depth mapping to pull the subject away from the background and then just apply this relight effect to the subject in the foreground. So it's a really powerful tool and you can do it right in the color tab. You don't even need to go into Fusion to do this. So another cool feature in the 18.5 beta is the ability to upload directly from DaVinci Resolve to TikTok. Now this is actually really handy because when you take the sum total features that you now have in DaVinci Resolve, such as auto-generating really accurate subtitles and the smart reframe, where it will keep your subject centered in the frame, and the ability to in one click automatically uh, reframe your export to be vertical video, the fact that you can then export it directly to TikTok is really gonna speed up a lot of workflows for people who work in social media and are doing this a lot. And once again, the fact that you can import professional looking video, color grade it, do whatever you want, and then very quickly add all these social media friendly features to it and upload directly is gonna be really, really handy for a lot of people. Blackmagic has said there are 150 technically new features to DaVinci Resolve. And obviously we can't go over all of them, but some other highlights include AI based upscaling. So if you're working with lower quality video, DaVinci Resolve is now much smarter at upscaling that in a way that looks really, really good. The AI depth mapping tool is now supported in Fusion. You can import and export timelines using open timeline IO format. Uh, the cut page has been sped up a lot, so you can now create split edits, generate subtitles, all those new features you can now do in the cut tab as well. So those are some of the biggest highlights of what Blackmagic has here at NAB 2023, but there's obviously tons of new stuff coming out. And we're going to be checking it all out here at NAB as it happens. So make sure you are subscribed to be an H and we'll be showing you that as it comes. Uh, and until next time, I'm Nick Brigadier and we will see you soon.